Hello everyone, welcome to yet another short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at dialopathology.com. The topic which I am discussing today is Autoimmune Atrophic Gastritis. We shall discuss this under these various settings. One, we will see what is the definition, what is the pathogenesis, what are the clinical features and how do you diagnose autoimmune gastritis and then finally understand a bit about the prognosis and treatment of autoimmune gastritis. So before we uh, get into autoimmune gastritis, let us quickly recollect what we uh, studied in the previous tutorial, that is normal anatomy and histology. We know that the uh, stomach is divided into four parts, right? The cardia, fundus, body and pylorus. And the depressions what you see in the mucose of the stomach are called gastric pits and which then extend into the gastric glands and there are two main types of gastric glands one is oxyntic gland another is pyloric gland right see the oxyntic gland is the one which is found in the body and fundus where you find uh, lots of parietal cells and chief cells you know that parietal cells are the ones which secrete gastric acid chief cells are the ones which secrete digestive enzymes like pepsinogen the uh, pyloric gland contains the important cells like G cells which synthesize gastrin. Gastrin is the one which is responsible for the production of acid by the parietal cells. And also you have another type of cell called D cells which secrete somatostatin which basically is a regulator of gastric acid secretion. We'll understand this in detail a bit later. Now what is this autoimmune atrophic gastritis? So this is a type of chronic gastritis. So we uh, studied another chronic gastritis in the earlier tutorial, right? H. pylori, H. pylori was the cause of another uh, chronic gastritis. So autoimmune gastritis is also a type of chronic gastritis which typically spares the antrum. So normally uh, this is the distribution, right? The cardia, fundus, body and stomach. The autoimmune gastritis is the one which affects the body and the fundus. See the pylorus is typically spared in the case of autoimmune atrophic gastritis. So it is often associated with marked hypergastrinemia and it accounts for around less than 10% of cases of chronic gastritis. The classical features of autoimmune atrophic gastritis includes antibodies, the presence of antibodies to parietal cells and intrinsic factor which can be detected in serum as well as in the gastric secretions. Second one, defective gastric acid secretion that is referred to as achlorhydria. Third one is reduced serum pepsinogen 1 concentration. Fourth one being vitamin B12 deficiency. And lastly, endocrine cell hyperplasia. Now we will understand as to the mechanism of each one of these, right? The main pathogenetic mechanism involves presence of these CD4 positive T cells against which are directed against these parietal cell components. The most important components of parietal cells, you know, for which antibodies are present are the proton pump. The one is the proton pump and two intrinsic factor. So antibodies to the parietal cells, specifically proton pump, that is hydrogen potassium channel. And secondly, antibodies to these intrinsic factor. So let's again get back to the normal understanding of acid secretion. So this is your parietal cell. Okay, and we have G cells in the antrum as we saw earlier. This G cell secrete gastrin and the gastrin is the one which stimulates the parietal cells to produce basically the acid, right? And gastrin also, you know, stimulates enterochromaffin cells which secretes histamine and histamine further stimulate these parietal cells. So histamine and gastrin along with acetylcholine are the ones which actually basically regulates the function of parietal cell to secrete the acid. This is a hydrogen potassium pump. Once there is enough acid secretion, what really happens is that there is a negative regulatory mechanism on the G cells. How does that happen? That is due to the effect of somatostatin released by these D cells. So somatostatin is basically a negative regulator of gastric acid secretion. So this stomatostatin reduces the synthesis of gastrin by the G cells. So that's your normal regulatory mechanism. And we should also note that the parietal cells also secrete intrinsic factor which is responsible for binding of vitamin B12. So this binding, this, this complex of vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor is extremely important for the vitamin B12 to be absorbed in the ileum. So now you understood the role of intrinsic factor and the role of this hydrogen potassium pump or the proton pump, right? Now let us see what really happens in autoimmune atrophic gastritis. So when there are antibodies against these parietal cells. Once there are 
antibodies to these parietal cell components you know that leads to immunological destruction destruction of oxyntic mucosa and the antibody is specifically directed against the proton pump so that means to say that there is defective acid secretion so defective acid secretion is the one which leads to achlorhydria now second one is that whenever there is destruction of oxyntic mucosa that further results in hyperplasia of the g cells in the antrum remember the destruction is happening in the body whereas hyperplasia of g cells is happening in the antrum so these increased uh, number of g cells you know they synthesize more and more gastrin that results in increased gastrin secretion which is absorbed by the blood and then that results in hypergastrinemia so the other reason for you know increased gastrin secretion is that there is no regul negative regulation that's because you don't have acid at all that means there is no role of somatostatin here no reg negative regulation so there is uninhibited production of gastrin so that is also another mechanism of increased gastrin levels right now we also know that there are antibodies to intrinsic factor and once there are antibodies to intrinsic factor there will be no production of intrinsic factor and you know if there is no intrinsic factor there is no vitamin b12 absorption because there is nothing for the vitamin b12 to bind because this complex of vitamin b12 and, and intrinsic factor is a one very important essential for it to be absorbed for the vitamin b12 to be absorbed in the ileum so no intrinsic factor no vitamin b12 absorption leading to vitamin b12 deficiency so we should also realize that the gastrin also synth you know stimulates enterochromaffin cells so it can result in enterochromaffin cell hyperplasia one more component is that whenever there is no acid or achlorhydria that interferes with non heme iron absorption because normally some amount of acid is really important for the iron to be absorbed so it can result in iron deficiency as well so now we understood the concepts behind achlorhydria vitamin b12 deficiency iron deficiency hypergastrinemia and enterochromaffin cell hyperplasia right so that is the pathogenetic mechanism which is happening in the autoimmune atrophic gastritis now apart from the destruction of these parietal cells chief cells are also destroyed note that there is no evidence of auto antibodies against chief cells but then how are these destroyed the reason be behind that is you know that the oxyntic gland as a whole is destroyed because of autoimmune you know um, attack on these parietal cells so the chief cells are basically lost due to destruction of the entire gland itself entire oxyntic gland itself during the autoimmune attack on the parietal cells so there is decreased chief cells resulting in decreased levels of pepsinogen levels so now you understood the reason or the concepts behind all those findings or characteristic features of autoimmune gastritis right so one is achlorhydria hypergastrinemia vitamin b12 deficiency iron deficiency reduced pepsinogen levels and enterochromaffin cell hyperplasia now what are the clinical features this is a very slowly progressive disease median age of diagnosis is around 60 years females are more commonly affected than males and you i mean the patients usually presents with symptoms of anemia particularly that of megaloblastic anemia and of course they do manifest with iron deficiency anemia as well but more important being vitamin b12 deficiency resulting in megaloblastic anemia and you should also understand that this this is is often associated with other autoimmune diseases like hashimotos thyroiditis type 1 diabetes mellitus mellitus addison's disease and other diseases now how do you diagnose autoimmune atrophic gastritis two important uh, way you can diagnose one by the presence of classical histological findings and or serological findings now what are the serological findings you will have to demonstrate auto antibodies to parietal cells in 80% of cases you find evidence of auto antibodies to parietal cells and you find auto antibodies to intrinsic factor in around 40% of cases but then this is more specific sometimes auto antibodies to parietal cells can also be seen in h pylori associated gastritis That that's why this is more specific to diagnose autoimmune atrophic gastritis second one you can demonstrate the elevated serum gastrin levels apart from these two you can also uh, demonstrate the deficiency of vitamin b12 and iron uh, levels that's actually a consequence of autoimmune atrophic gastritis now what are the histological findings 
see often you know when the patient is symptomatic or having mild symptoms they are subjected to undergo endoscopy and then biopsy so the classical findings in histology includes you know diffuse damage to the oxyntic mucosa that's the mucosa present in the body and fundus right diffuse damage to the oxyntic mucosa with in the body and the fundus where the inflammation is extensive usually chronic inflammation and unlike in h pylori where the inflammation is superficial autoimmune atrophic gastritis the inflammation is very deep seated okay you find lots of inflammatory cells the predominant ones being lymphocytes macrophages plasma cells you find extensive areas of lymphoid aggregates you can even find lymphoid follicles with prominent germinal centers apart from these findings you see evidence of intestinal metaplasia and endocrine cell hyperplasia okay so these are the classical histological findings in autoimmune atrophic gastritis now what is the sequelae what if this particular disease is not treated or not handled at the earliest stages what happens so the sequelae includes you know basically we are looking at other lesions which these patients develop so apart from enterochromaffin cell hyperplasia which we know that can finally you know result in the development of neuroendocrine tumors particularly carcinoid tumors now sometimes these patients can develop pyloric gland adenomas and they also can develop pseudopolyps and they can be either pseudo polyps or even hyperplastic polyps of the antrum and the body that's how they can develop these pseudo polyps during the process of destruction of the you know uh, oxyntic glands the intervening normal appearing gland you know they appear as elevated uh, lesions they appear as uh, polypoid lesions and that's why they are called pseudo polyps because they are not true polyps the most important uh, thing we need to remember about autoimmune atrophic gastritis is that these patients do have increased risk of developing gastric adenocarcinoma particularly intestinal type of adenocarcinoma now how do you treat autoimmune gastritis most often the treatment is symptomatic where you actually supplement with dietary uh, or therapeutic iron and folic acid supplementation and you should treat h pylori if at all if this autoimmune gastritis is also associated with h pylori infections and then there are lots of uh, treatment regimens with immunosuppressive for immunosuppressive control is been tried but that's of limited success so this is all about autoimmune gastritis very short topic we looked into what autoimmune gastritis is we understood the pathogenesis a bit about clinical features how we diagnose what is the prognosis and treatment of autoimmune gastritis if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe because i'm coming out with another interesting video next saturday do share if you find this video useful thank you